Thank you, Steve. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, if I well understood the, the two presentations we have had this morning, the, the second one about uh, New Zealand, it's business as usual, as uh, all in the countries, more and more cars, more and more uh, congestion, few people in public transit. And the first presentation by Maya, it was uh, what I call the accident of Stockholm and Gothenburg. <laughs> because uh, you, you, you mentioned that month, the, the fact that we, you have the, the congestion charge in, in Stockholm, it's because the, 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 the politician, the, the social democrat, needed the support of the Green Party. And in London, it's because of Mr. Livingstone. So you are the accident. And as an economist, I am strongly in favor of that kind of accident. <laughs> so uh, I, I will try to explain why, why is it possible to, uh, to attract more and more people in the idea of congestion charging, but maybe by changing the view uh, about the, 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 the principle of congestion charging. So uh, my colleague Aurélie Mercier and uh, I will present that. I start the, the first part. So with the road pricing, if we have a, a big acceptability issue. If it is so difficult to set up a road pricing, a, char a congestion charging, not a road pricing, a congestion charging in, in, in cities, it's because uh, the, the citizens, the local politicians, they have good reasons to, to, to be very, very careful with that, and we will explain that, and why, uh, who are the potential winners, the potential losers of the system, and then uh, why we, we, we can move from a time approach to a sp special approach, and then uh, to, to look at the uh, issue of uh, space consumption. So here you have the usual uh, uh, complaining about congestion. Uh, in a lot of uh, very big, very big cities uh, in China and, and, so, and, and so on, the level of congestion is very high. But you have no congestion charge. Why it is so difficult? And the first reason is that uh, it, it was very well explained by William Vomel and William Oates uh, more than uh, 20 years ago in the economics of environments. If you look at the generalized cost, that is to say uh, uh, on the y-axis, the, the, the cost of time and the money cost. You, you add the two, and then you have the density of traffic. And then you have, when you have a, a little number of cars, the speed is the same. That is to say, the, the generalized cost is the same. But the more you increase the number of cars, the more you increase the average cost. In that case, you have here the, 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 the demand, and then you have the level of traffic with uh, average cost uh, higher than the, the lower costs. It's because you have, in fact, each uh, new car is reducing the average speed, and then you have the marginal cost. And then for an economist, it's obvious. You have to charge not at the average cost. You have to charge at the, at the marginal cost. In order to do that, you have to, 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 to create the toll. This is the blue uh, arrow. And then you, the result is you have less traffic on the road, you have a, a, a higher speed, that is to say you have a welfare gain for those people on the road because they are going faster. So the, the welfare gain is the, 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 the big uh, blue rectangle, rectangle. And you have a social loss for those people obliged to, to leave. Just but it's, it's a small triangle. So if you compare the two surfaces, clearly it, it is optimal to create a, a, a urban tool. So why it is so difficult to convince political, uh, lo local politicians or people to accept that? It's, it's very difficult because of that. Because in order to gain the blue rectangle, the rectangle, you have to pay the yellow one. You have to pay more to transfer to the community than the gain. So it, it's why it's so difficult. So this is the first explanation of the difficulty. It is the, 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 the fact that if you want to create an optimal congestion toll, you have to transfer a lot of money from the car drivers to the community. This is an example with the average value of time. If you, uh, the, so the, 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 you, we have a welfare improvement, it's clear, but the main winner of the congestion toll is the beneficiary of the revenues of the toll, and road users are paying more than the welfare. 
if we adopt now another hypothesis, that is to say, we consider different value of time. It, it was the work of, well-known work of uh, Ken Small. You have generalized costs, and then you have the, the value of time on the horizontal axis. When you have the value of time is null, you have the, uh, the starting point of the, uh, the red and the, uh, uh, the green line. It is the monetary cost. And then, according to the speed, I suppose that the speed of public transit is lower than the speed of the road, of the car, so the, 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 the slope is uh, steeper for the, the, the public transit and smoother for the car. And then you have the, uh, the, model, uh, the model speeds. The, the people with a low value of time are in the public transit and with a high value of time are in the car. So it is the, it is the situation. Don't forget that the normal solution for politicians is not urban toll. The normal solution is that. Do nothing, and then you increase congestion. That is to say, you increase the slope of the car mobility, and the result is more people in public transit, or bicycle, or... or so it is exactly the policy we have in Paris. Mrs. Hidalgo said, I don't want any public... To, to, uh, what I want, is to, uh, uh, to, to, to reduce the size of the roads, to, to increase the pressure on, on car. By the way, a congestion, congestion is a solution and not a problem, and this is the common view of a lot of politicians, explicitly or implicitly. If you want to uh, abandon this uh, stupid view, uh, <laughs> excuse, excuse me, <laughs> you can remove that from the... <laughs> <laughs> So I started. If you want to remove this usual view, <laughs> you have to, uh, to observe what happened in case of uh, 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 a congestion charge. You increase the, the, the starting point of the red, the red line. That is to say, you increase the monetary costs. But due to the fact that you reduce the, volu the volume of traffic, you increase the speed, so you, you have a smoother uh, slope for the car. And then you have all the winners and the losers. You observe that uh, the winners are not a lot. It is the, 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 the group under, n number four at, at the right. You can see that in, for them, the car with toll has a generalized cost lower than the car without the toll. So they are the winners. But the, the, the group number three, they are the losers because they have to pay. They, they stay on the road, but they have to pay and the generalized cost is higher for them than before. And the, the, the group number two is also a group of losers. They are obliged to shift to the public transit. In that case, finally, the general cost is higher. And even the group number one uh, maybe is losing because they have to travel with the group two. So there are <laughs> maybe le less, le less seats and, and so on. So you have three groups of losers and one group of winners. It is the main obstacle to the system. And then if you want to, uh, to develop a, a, a congestion charge, you have to, to, to change the view. So I have to, uh, to discuss with the losers and to buy their acceptability. For instance, what you did in, uh, in Stockholm, by improving the transit, public transit system, it is uh, magic here in, in the graph, you improve the situation for everybody. That is to say, you improve the system by a new public transit supply. You reduce the, 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 the slope of the public transit. That is to say, you increase accessibility by public transit. In that case, everybody uh, is abandoning the, the car, except people with a very high value of time. So this is, uh, this, this is the, 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 the win-win win, win, win game. But clearly, it's difficult to obtain that, because it's difficult to improve the situation for all the uh, public transit uh, users. So, what is clear is that we have to take into account the different value of time and the sensitivity con to congestion pricing, and we have, because we have more losers than, than winners, except if there is a huge improvement of public transit, so why do we need to introduce other modes of transport and we need to, in, to, to develop the public transit system, not because of the congestion of the road, but because of the, the space-time consumption. What is important for politicians is to explain to the commuters that the problem is not uh, road or not road. The problem is that uh, uh, which uh, uh, square meter uh, per hour you are occupying. When you are a pedestrian, 
you, uh, uh, and, and if you are using a car, when you are using a car, you are using five times more uh, square meter per hour than a pedestrian. So if, we, if I can compare with uh, what was the case uh, some days ago for me in the, in, the, in the aircraft between Hong Kong and air, I was in the economic class and some people were in the business class, maybe some of you. <laughs> the same speed, the same speed for the two, but not the same price and not the same space. And it is why what we have to explain to the, to, to the commuters, you don't pay to remove congestion. You pay because you are using more space and the space is the, the rarest resource for the collectivity. For you as an individual, Time is the rarest resource, but it's not the case for the community. For the community, it is, is space. So when you, are, when you put the focus on space consumption, we, we put the, the, the burden of responsibility on car and not on public transit system. Look at that. The space-time the, the space consumption of a car according to the speed. It is the consumption in a square meter per hour at a very, very low speed close to one uh, to zero, uh, it's not calculated for zero, but just a little more, it's four square meter per hour for a car. At an average speed of 20, 30 kilometers, it's uh, uh, one square meter per hour, and then the more you increase the speed, the more you increase the, the consumption. So we have also to explain to uh, uh, the, uh, car drivers that the problem is that we, we needed a very low speed in, in city to uh, reduce the consumption. You, you want to drive at 100 kilometer per hour, you need a, a great quantity of space. So the, the key, the, the, the key uh, reasoning is the, 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 speed flow, the speed flow curve. You know that uh, if the speed is very high, the flow is very uh, low. And if you reduce the speed, you increase the flow and there is a maximum flow uh, where you can, uh, where you, it's no more possible to increase uh, the, the uh, either the flow or the speed. And, th and this is the, 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 key, the key reasoning. And then I will give the floor to my colleague uh, Aurélie because when you consider that space is the, the rarest resource, we have to put the focus on space and then we have to look at the, 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 the accessibility because what is very uh, uh, important for the people is not only to, to lose time or not or to pay, it's what, what part of the city I can reach. So what part of the city is accessible? And then I propose a new approach of congestion charging. For individual time is the rarest resource. For the community, it's space is the rarest resource. So we have to address two key special issues, the space consumption of different modes of transport and how to address the special, the special impacts of congestion charging. Aurélie, it's yours. Thanks. So, uh, accessibility, uh, as presented by uh, by Westin, can be very interesting because um, there is a kind of paradox between efficiency and acceptability, uh, because efficient project solutions policies are not very accepted by people, and uh, accepted by accepted policies are not. Uh, very efficient sometimes or often. Uh, so the, the main issue is how to combine uh, efficiency and acceptability that I mentioned uh, in transport policies. And one, one uh, answer is to uh, combine time or generalized cost and uh, space density using the concept of accessibility. So uh, as Arie uh, mentioned this morning, what is uh, or how to define accessibility. Uh, in our work, we consider, uh, as Maurice uh, proposed uh, in the 70s, accessibility uh, can be defined by the ease with which uh, opportunities, activities can be reached given a transport system or uh, and a given location, origin location. So, in the accept accessibility concept, we have a, sp a space, a density dimension, and also a time or a di distance dimension. And 
the, the Einstein formula developed at the end of the 50s is very interesting because with this uh, formula, we can observe that accessibility is not only time, as we often uh, consider, but is a product of the level of opportunities, the, driver, the drivers. We want to make a trip because we want to reach some activities, some opportunities, for example, some, uh, some jobs in, uh, in urban areas. But to reach these opportunities, I have to pay a cost, generalized cost, travel cost, a time cost, and monetary cost. And an important element, I will come back to this uh, after in my presentation, we have a sensitivity to travel cost. The sensitivity is different according people, according uh, activities, according uh, socio uh, socioeconomic uh, features, and so on. So accessibility is a product of density, opportunities, drivers, and transport cost uh, in, this, uh, in, the same, in the same indicator. So now I will present some elements, some ideas uh, to uh, combine efficiency and acceptability. One question in acceptability is how to integrate spatial and uh, local disparities. Individuals are not the same, uh, they have different features. So how to integrate these different features on the transport policy to, to improve acceptability? So, so the first one is a well-known uh, dimension with the value of time. We don't have the same value of time between, uh, acti between um, individuals. And then in my presentation, I will take uh, different examples from the Lyon metropolitan area. So uh, some words to the city of Lyon. This is the second city in France behind Paris. We don't have uh, cordon charging in Lyon, but uh, in lab we made uh, simulations on different types of cordon charging, different levels. So I will present you different types of, uh, of examples, but all will be uh, in Lyon. So the first one, uh, in the first one, uh, a, tall, a five year tall uh, cordon, uh, cordon toll has been simulated in the city of Lyon. So people uh, in this situation have to pay five euro to enter uh, the city center uh, in of the Lyon metropolitan area. We have divided the entire area into different zones here in horizontal axis. In vertical axis here, you have you've got the different values of time uh, computed according to income levels. So we can find that in central areas, value of times are highest than uh, the first belt. Rich people live either in central area or in some suburban second belt areas, often in the western part of the, of the Lyon metropolitan area. So we have different value of time. And here uh, you get accessibility variation after, before and after the urban toll, the congestion charge implementation. So we can observe that uh, for people living in central area, accessibility stays the same or increase a little bit. But for people locating outside uh, the cordon, uh, accessibility decreases. This is one result I will come back after uh, in uh, another example. But what is interesting is that if, you, if we focus on, uh, on different zones, accessibility variation can be different if we consider a single travel time for every people. It's about 11 euros per hour in France in urban uh, areas for um, work, um, home to work uh, trips. Uh, it's often the same, but we can have uh, slightly differences uh, in some zones. Note that here we've got big zones, differentiation in big zones. If we consider smaller zones, we have more differentiation according to a level of income uh, compared to um, median or mean income. So this is a well-known indicator. Another one uh, is 
how to integrate socioeconomic disparities according to accessibility. In other words, how to improve accessibility measurement to integrate disparities between individuals. Uh, in previous works with colleagues, we have computed mm -hmm. different travel time sensibility. Do, so it's not cost, monetary cost, or generalized cost, but only travel time cost. And we observe that uh, according to three purposes, the same individuals are different, uh, different sensitivities. Here this is for the full day, here for the morning peak period. And we observe that uh, people going to work on the morning peak period are less sensitive to travel time than if they go to, uh, to leisure activities or to, to, to other activities. So it's interesting when uh, we implement a congestion charge to say, what are trips made by individuals? For example, you mentioned that uh, um, congestion charge was not applied weekends or evening and so on. So for which type, which kind of people, which kind of trips do we want to, uh, to implement a congestion charge? Other, <coughs> other categories are according to uh, gender, women and men, and the same sensitivity to, to travel time for uh, work trips, home to work trips, or for other purposes. Another interesting uh, point is that according to your labor category, we don't have uh, the, same, um, the same sensitivity for, uh, for example, for HBV trips, to go to, to work trips. And if you are, uh, for example, employee, you are more sensitive to travel time to go to work than if you are manager, for example. And this is the, this, uh, this uh, category, this, uh, um, this table, we will consider to show how accessibility can be, um, can be different if you consider either the same travel code sensitivity for each per, uh, people, or if you consider an heterogeneity into cost sensitivity. So some words of explanation of this map, sorry. Here, this is our perimeter. This is a Lyon metropolitan area. Here, this is a city of Lyon and a, a close city called Villeurbanne. Here, about here, uh, the first belt and after the second belt. So in Lyon, what we observed in the generalized case with uh, the same travel time uh, sensitivity, Accessibility by car to jobs, it's important, accessibility to jobs by car in morning peak period is better if you live into the city center than if you live in suburbs. It's uh, very, very often observed because first, networks are very dense, very high into the city center to access the city center. Here you've got motorways, for example, in raid, and second, Often, uh, jobs in the Lyon metropolitan area are located into the city center. So accessibility is better if you live close to your job um, than if you live uh, far from your jobs. This is with uh, the same travel um, time sensitivity for each individual. Now, we consider an heterogeneity in travel time sensitivity computed according to uh, social uh, economic features and labor categories. What we observe? We observe that accessibility often decreases uh, for, uh, for zones according to uh, initial accessibility here because people living in these areas in the second bed areas, people are more often uh, employees, for example, than people living inside <laughs> into the city center who have often manager of the, the, um, the share of manager are more important in Lyon in the city center or in this western area than in other area far from the city center. So this map to show you we can uh, pay attention to the population uh, distribution according to socioeconomic factor features or factors. 
here this is for label categories but we can uh, make this type of maps for other categories second element to improve acceptability using accessibility is how to uh, identify winners and losers according to special dimension to other examples uh, in Lyon metropolitan area the first one here a toll zone three euro to uh, to drive for uh, it's three euro to drive into the city center the zones told is their city center of Lyon metropolitan area we observe that many losers here are people living in the city center because they are uh, affected by this toll to go to uh, to go to work and to make small trips so level of toll is very important according to um, to time gains and according to trip um, travel time trips then if you implement no more a toll zone a zone toll but a cordon toll with the same level of price three euros here we can see we observe that people living in the city center are winners because they don't pay cordon toll to go to jobs for the, for the majority of people but losers are those living close to the cordon because they have to pay the cordon toll and uh, time gains are not very important according to um, to travel time so this map can uh, give us elements on where are users uh, and uh, where are losers and where are winners but it's not very interesting if you analyze on this map with uh, only uh, without other information what is interesting interesting is to combine this map with other elements and here we combine this map with uh, surplus variation computation here in horizontal axis you've got the um, initial accessibility level and in vertical axis you've got we've got the surplus variation in other words who are winners and users and what are the uh, initial accessibility level here for a horizontal we observe that winners are located close to the close the, to the boundary are people who had the, the the less accessibility level before the the toll implementation while for the cordon toll we don't uh, show this kind of of, um, of elements so th there is not great correlation uh, relationship between initial accessibility level and surplus variation so this map show where are winners and losers and what types of people do we want to uh, to favor people who were uh, who had a great accessi initial accessibility level or people who had a very low access initial accessibility level but pay attention when <laughs> you analyze accessibility maps and uh, uh, often politicians want to analyze accessibility maps uh, as they want to to uh, to analyze in other words uh, an example to to analyze that to highlight that is the example of the plant uh, motorway called Anneau des Sciences in uh, in uh, Lyon here this is uh, the, the city of Lyon and the toll motorway plant toll motorway is there and accessibility analysis shows that, that all people whatever the location are uh, benefit from this new plant motorway and for wide zones th there is no change in terms of accessibility and what is interesting in this map is uh, um, the reading from politicians. Uh, politicians in favor of this motorway said it's perfect. We are very happy because you show that this motorway will 
sorry, will improve accessibility in the western part, in the western area, and this is what we want. So we are very happy. But what is interesting is to uh, uh, note that people uh, not in favor of this motorway, that we are very happy because you show what we, what we wanted you to show. Accessibility is better or will be better with this uh, motorway for people living in the western area. So other people want to locate, will locate or want to locate in this western area. So real estate prices will increase and we don't want to, uh, we want to protect this area. So pay attention, Acce we can um, interpret differently accessibility results. So keep in mind. And last, uh, last element to improve acceptability using accessibility is the compensation issues. What type of compensation uh, can be implemented to, to improve acceptabilities of road charging? The first one is a time compensation. Uh, we will increase travel cost with a cordon charge, but you will gain some, uh, some times. Uh, for example, with the Euro 5 uh, cordon, uh, toll zone, uh, cordon toll in Lyon, we have a car traffic decrease, about 5%. But uh, this traffic decrease uh, impacts uh, travel time with time gained about 30 seconds to join the city center for an average time trip of 8 minutes. This uh, time uh, time gains are not the same for people living in suburban area. It's lower according to uh, to average time trip. Another type of compensation uh, can be to say maybe you won't gain time, but you will or you can uh, gain money. Uh, if you share your vehic vehicle, or this uh, this type of compensation, is to encourage people to share their vehicle. We will they will have uh, higher accessibility because of um, uh, time uh, or monetary cost decrease, and if they are if they have reserved lines, they can increase also uh, travel time. Uh, but travel time impacts are. Um, I'm not sure because it depends on the congestion of this reserve line and if project uh, is well accepted by people, if people share their vehicle and if they are use this uh, reserve line, accessibility can decrease because of higher travel time in these lines. So to conclude this presentation, uh, questions? Uh, congestion charging um, is ask the issue of density and time gains. So the question and the concept of accessibility uh, can be used, can be uh, um, used to to improve uh, acceptability of transport policies. And the main issue is the compensation process, how to compensate the cordon charging um, for road drivers. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> thank you very much. Um,